Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm inside my house today instead of outside my door because this is where nature is occurring right now. We had a series of warm days here in December, and the stink bugs literally came out of the woodwork in my house. So I decided I would do a follow-up episode to the in-depth episode I did on the biology of the Asian brown marmorated stink bug and talk specifically about what my viewers shared with me. I had over 300,000 views up to this date on that episode and almost a thousand comments and many people shared the natural pesticide free deterrents that they use to help deter stink bugs in their house and it's really fascinating and I'm so grateful to all my viewers for sharing with me and enriching our channel. So today's episode is about deterrence to stink bugs in your house and again I'm going to feature the research proven best stink bug trap that you can make at home for just pennies. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard you never know what you're going to find. I want to begin this episode by saying this episode is about the invasive brown marmorated stink bug that arrived here from Asia, probably in shipping containers, and was first identified in Allentown in 1996. Now, you've seen stink bugs before, and you may have grown up with stink bugs. There are about 200 native species of stink bugs in the United States alone. So you've seen them before, but this one is different. This one is a different animal. It's very invasive. Its population is growing out of control. It's not part of our natural ecology with checks and balance. And in fact, it's reducing the diversity and the numbers of our native species. So it's a threat even to our native stink bug species that don't occur in these enormous, enormous numbers. In agriculture, they do horrible damage to fruits and vegetables. They scar the fruit surfaces. They spread bacteria and diseases on the surfaces of fruit. They cause them to rot and the same thing to vegetables. They really do millions and millions and millions of dollars of harm to agriculture. So why they're a nuisance in our home, the real problem is out there in the field of agriculture and the impact it's made on local economies. Stink bugs are also called shield bugs because in fact their abdomen really does look like the shape of a shield. You can distinguish a brown marmorated stink bug from other stink bugs by looking closely at the antenna where you'll see a light and dark banding and look closely at the abdomen of the stink bug as well. Right on the edges you're going to also see this characteristic white and dark banding and that's the telltale sign that it's a brown marmorated stink bug. <laughs> the other indicator is that it occurs in large numbers. Our local stink bugs, our native stink bugs, don't group like this. So if you've got lots in your house or in your shed or on your walls outside on a sunny side, it's the brown marmorated stink bug, not one of our natives. In summer, stink bugs are out reproducing, sometimes uh, producing three or four generations in the summer and feeding on plants and particularly agricultural crops where they find a ready source of food. But as the fall comes, they search for a place to overwinter. These insects overwinter as adults, enter a state called diapause, which is kind of like an insect hibernation where they slow down their metabolic rate slows down, they don't develop sexually, and they just want to find a place to hide where they don't freeze and then emerge again in the springtime to go ahead and mate and lay eggs again. So they're coming into your house to find refuge from the cold. In addition, if you've seen them massing on the sunny sides of your house in the fall in large numbers, they're releasing a pheromone. When one marmorated stink bug 
finds a suitable overwinter location, it releases a pheromone that in fact attracts other stink bugs to say, hey, here's a great place to overwinter. Let's overwinter in a big group. They seem to really like being in big groups. So what can you do to deter stink bugs if they're arriving outside at your house or if they've gotten indoors? Probably no surprise to you, I'm not in favor of spraying your house outside with pesticides because of the impact that it has on desirable native species and our local ecology. Indoors, it's to me, it's pesticides are a health risk to both adults and children and pets, and also not even the National Pesticide Information Center recommends spraying for stink bugs indoors because for one, it's kind of ineffective, and second, if it does kill them, it'll often kill them behind walls where their dead bodies will build up and then attract carpet beetles. And carpet beetles can create another problem in your house because after they multiply and uh, grow in numbers feeding on dead stink bugs, they'll invade other parts of your house and eat any natural product that's made of wool or cotton. So pesticides indoors or outdoors is not a good thing. So many of these ideas that I'm going to share with you now on natural products that deter stink bugs are from my viewers and they tried them and this is what they shared with me and my other viewers that worked for them. So you might want to check out some of these alternatives. The first thing I always do, of course, is when I see them, I'll vacuum them up and I'll either use a dust buster like this or I'll use my vacuum cleaner. And another thing you can do with your vacuum cleaner, because if you once you vacuum them up, you need to dispose of them outside or in your trash so that they don't release the stink and the odor in your house. So a good alternative is to put a knee stocking into the tube of your vacuum cleaner and catch them there, and then you can take that, tie it off, and throw it out. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention that, did you know that some people don't smell stink bugs? And I'm one of those people. Another fascinating thing I got from my viewers is that some people, the stink bug cell is just horrible and they can't stand it and they can't seem to get it out of their nose. And some people describe it as a smell of rotten cilantro. If you ask 10 people what stink bug smell like, they'll give you 10 different responses. There's really a wide range in sensitivity to the odor and whether or not people can detect it at all. So I'm one of the lucky ones. I don't smell stink bugs. I just don't like them dive bombing me when I'm sitting quietly reading by a, a warm light in the evening. And I don't like the stains they leave, which are hard to get out on, on the trims of my windows. Many of my viewers have told me essential oils are very effective in deterring stink bugs, either from entering your house or from hanging out in certain play places. Many plants have evolved with different kinds of toxins and odors to discourage predation or herbivory by organisms that will eat it. So that's a natural defense of plants and you can use their natural defenses in your house or outside of your house around screen doors and openings to deter their presence. Essential oils are things like neem oil, which comes from an extract of neem tree seeds, uh, oil of wintergreen, clove oil, mint can be very effective either from extracts dropped in water and sprayed around the outside or indoors of your house, as well as garlic, geranium, spearmint. So there's many different kinds of oils that really work to deter stink bugs. Another natural product that is lethal to stink bugs is diatomaceous earth. You can spread this around openings or on windowsills. It's harmless to humans and it's very, very toxic to insects, breaks down their wax layer and interferes with their breathing apparatus. 
Many of my viewers talked about the effectiveness of dish detergent in a, a mix of water. And particularly Dawn dish detergent was mentioned frequently by brand name. I'm not sure exactly why. You can use a dish detergent and water mix to spray on the outside of your house when the bugs are massing. And this may have a double effect by not only killing the stink bugs, but it also washes away the pheromones that they release to attract other bugs to your house to say, hey, here's a good uh, overwinter place. I've had people put them in little hand spray bottles. I had someone share about putting it in a squirt gun and having fun spraying them with a squirt gun. Another thing that is really surprising to me, and I don't know how this got started, but several viewers mentioned using dryer sheets. And I looked that up, and apparently stink bugs can't stand the fragrances that are in dryer sheets. And it was suggested that you rub down screens and windows and doors with dryer sheets, and that'll keep stink bugs away from those locations. Another viewer suggestion was if you decide you need to grab the stink bug, a couple random ones here and there. Don't use toilet paper or your hands because you'll get that odor on there. Use a wet paper towel or a plastic bag and grab them with that and roll it up and then throw it in the garbage and they won't be able to uh, release that stink or at least you won't s smell it and spread it around the house. Another suggestion was using commercial pet strips that have a sticky surface or even using painter's tape or duct tape and laying it on the window sills that they frequent and then that'll capture the stink bugs and you can roll them up and throw them away. One of the more creative methods that viewers suggested was by using aerosol spray cans for dusting off computers and cameras. When that air comes out, the physics of going from a liquid to a gas, it gets really cold. And you can spray a stink bug directly and you'll freeze it before it can let loose its odor. And you can pick up this frozen stink bug and dispose of it. I thought that was very, very creative. And remember, of course, that one of the best deterrents is, of course, caulking windows and doors and stuff. So I got to thinking, how big a crack can a stink bug get through? What cracks can they get into? And they can get in all over the house, around outlets, around utility pipes, or utility entrances, and siding, and molding around windows and doors. There's so many different ways that they can come in. So what can they cross through? Well, I tried taking a board and setting it up on one penny and seeing it could, if it could get underneath. No luck. I took two pennies. No luck. And then I took three pennies, and I found that the width of the opening is the width of three pennies. So if it's that wide, and the stink bug can get through, he's about one centimeter across, that's the size crack that he'll get into. So the cracks above three millimeters need to be sealed with caulking to prevent entrance of the stink bugs. And finally, the do-it-yourself stink bug trap. Now this stink bug trap was tested by Virginia Tech researchers in the Department of Agriculture. And they found that this trap was 14 times as effective as some store-bought traps that you can pay for up to $50 for it. They tested it in 16 different homes, and basically it's really easy to make and very effective. You need a foil turkey pan, some water, maybe about a quart or a half a gallon, some dish detergent, and mix that in and get it nice and mixed and frothed up, and then put a desk lamp over the top with a full spectrum light bulb that has all the colors of the, the spectrum in it. And this will attract stink bugs to it. They are attracted to lights at night and they, when they hit the water, the soap in there will help them drown and you'll have dead stink bugs. 
So this trap is most effective in the springtime when they're emerging and most attracted to lights. Remember that the best way to deal with insect pests is often not just one method, but what's called an Integrated Pest Management Program, or IPM. So you may wish to have an IPM at your house where you use a lot of the different ideas here to manage stink bugs in your home. Well, I hope you found something useful in this episode about stink bug deterrence and pesticide-free alternatives. You know, if you watched my channel before, that I'm passionate about nature, and I love living things, and I respect living things. And I want to teach kids and families to go outside and learn more about things around them and discover them and find out all the cool, fascinating things about them. But when it comes to invasive species that have an impact on our native species, both the diversity and individual populations, and when invasive species harm our agricultural industries, fruit and vegetable crops, and impact the families that are part of that industry, then I feel like I have to draw the line. And so many viewers wrote to me asking me about what they could do with stink bugs. And so many other viewers shared how they deter them that I just had to do this episode. So remember, if you like my channel and like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like. I love hearing comments from my viewers. If this is your first time watching me, please check out my other videos where I talk about amazing things in nature. So thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.